Hello and welcome to the fourth part of Disposable Friends. This has been a fascinating series to research because it's given me such a great insight into the way Megan ticks. She is certainly a very good networker and I guess the only downside of that is people do tend to get discarded <laughs> when they're of no further use. But in this episode I'm going to be talking about Lizzie Cundy, Millie McIntosh and Piers Morgan. So I'm going to kick off with Piers Morgan. Now, I wouldn't call him a disposable friend. I would call him a disposable acquaintance. I think their connection has been quite overstated to so far because from what I can see, they only met up once in real life for drinks and admittedly they got on very well. But they did have a Twitter relationship. They were Twitter buddies. So I guess, yes, you could call them friends. But that drink state that they have, it's often Miss said that she ran off to meet Harry after that drink stew, but she didn't. The drinks with Piers was on the 29th of June and she didn't meet up with Harry for the first time until the 1st of July. Okay, so she's in London for Wimbledon week and she's being sponsored by Ralph Lauren. So she's looking very glamorous and chic and she's in the stands at Wimbledon and she texts Piers and she says, hey, I'm in London. Do you want to meet up? As I said, they've been Twitter buddies. So he said, yes, great. And they met at a pub near his home. Now, it's really interesting. In Andrew Morton's book, Megan, A Hollywood Princess, he describes this meeting in quite good detail. So I'm going to read you a little bit about it, about Megan when she first walked in to the pub. She looked every inch the Hollywood superstar, very slim, very leggy, very elegant and impossibly glamorous, or as the landlord put it, a stunner. As she sipped a dirty martini, they chatted about suits, her background, her days as a briefcase girl on Deal or No Deal, gun control in America, her passion for calligraphy, women's rights, and her current ambition to be a TV presenter. Now, <laughs> Piers Morgan would have been attractive then if she wanted to become a TV presenter on uh, UK TV because he actually was the co-host for Good Morning Britain, as you know. Now, when all of it unfolded on Good Morning Britain, when Piers Morgan actually had that fateful argument with the weatherman, the weatherman sticking up for Meghan Markle and Piers Morgan more or less saying that he didn't believe one iota of anything that Meghan said after the Oprah Winfrey interview. Now, when you look back, it's easy now for everyone to think, well, why wouldn't anyone believe Piers Morgan and why was he sacked? But if you look back at the time, he was quite the lone voice. There was a lot of support for Meghan Markle, in, particularly in the USA, to be fair, but there still was quite solid support for her throughout the UK. And it was only after the Oprah Winfrey interview and when the damage from that sort of rolled on and amped up and people analysed it more carefully and those 16 lies were sort of exposed and people went more into it. But that didn't happen straight away. That happened over the next few weeks. So Piers Morgan was really striking out on his own that morning after the Oprah Winfrey interview, when he was one of the, the loud critics of Meghan Markle and what she said, he was a bit of a lone voice at that time. Now, it was really misinterpreted by a lot of people at the time too, because a lot of people were thinking that he was feeling like a jilted boyfriend or that, you know, he was somehow sort of jealous or upset because he'd been ghosted. And a lot of his critics used that against him and sort of made out that it was all sour grapes and that was the only reason why he didn't like Meghan Markle. So he was railing against this sort of perception of her and he was really worried about the damage that she was doing to the royal family and the potential, potential future damage she could do to the royal family. 
Because as we know, Piers Morgan is a monarchist. He believes in the in the royal family. He believes in the constitutional monarchy and the way it's all set up in the UK. So it's a pity that he was dismissed in those early days by many as someone that just sort of had a chip on his shoulder about Meghan Markle. Now, as we can see, as time has gone on, he has sort of been justified in his objections and his fears about Meghan Markle. And so that must feel very satisfactory to him, I would imagine. But like I said, he wasn't ever an ongoing, really close friend. He was more a networked sort of uh, acquaintance. But you can also see logically that when Meghan did meet up with Harry, it's highly unlikely she is going to ever accept his calls or have anything to do with him anymore because it would have jeopardised her relationship with Harry. She was trying to get a ring on her finger at this stage and the last thing she could afford to do was have a relationship with someone that Harry absolutely despised. I mean, Piers Morgan was the editor of The Mirror and Harry knew that. And Harry was already angry about everything that went down in his early 20s with the mirror. So you can see that there is no way that Meghan could risk having any sort of relationship with someone that Harry despised so thoroughly. Now, the next one is Lizzie Cundy. And I've got to say, I love this girl. Everything I have seen about her in magazines, on TV, I think she's fun. And I also think she's talented. And it's interesting how she met Meghan Markle. Now, she met Meghan back in 2013, so a good three years before she met Harry, and they used to see each other every time Meghan used to come over to London. So they had more of a real friendship. I wouldn't call her a disposable acquaintance. I would call her a disposable friend. But the unique thing about Lizzie Cundy is she didn't mind. She didn't mind being dumped by Megan. She was so cool about it and so professional and so incredibly kind. She gave all these classy sort of responses. She's funny. She's got a tongue in cheek sort of sense of humor. And she said, I completely understand. I didn't expect that she would stay in contact with me once she, you know, met Prince Harry and that she was going to become part of the royal family. And she said, if I ever ran into Megan, I would just give her a big hug and say, how are you going? I hope everything's going well. She was so nice. But later on, her really cheeky sense of humour came out because when they announced that they were going to call Lilibet Lilibet, she actually said, oh, everyone thinks that she was calling Lilibet after Queen Elizabeth II, but she wasn't. She was calling her Lilibet after me because Megan knew that my nickname at school was Lilibet. And so she made out that she caught a little bit after her, which I thought was very clever and very, very funny. So over the ensuing years, she sort of had little funny little tidbits in the paper and in interviews where she'll have a funny little dig like that. But she's never malicious. She's never mean. And she's never really actually said anything bad about Megan at all. So the way they met was they were at this dinner party and it was for a big sort of global charity event. And so celebs and influencers were invited to this pre-event dinner the night before. And Lizzie Cundy was going to be on the red carpet of this big event interviewing famous people. And so at this night before dinner, the organiser asked Lizzie Cundy to actually look after Meghan Markle. And Lizzie Cundy didn't want to. She wanted to be with her mates who were on another table and she didn't want to be stuck with this person. She didn't even know who she was and she just, oh gosh, do I have to? But she had to. So she was next to Megan at, at this dinner. Turns out they got on like a house on fire. Well, of course they did. 
Because like we know by now, Megan is the ultimate charmer, the ultimate networker, the ultimate best girlfriend you could ever meet at a dinner party. And that's exactly what went on. They had a great time. They had heaps of drinks together. By the end of the night, Lizzie Cundy was getting out her private little black book and trying to fix Megan up with Ashley Cole. And, um, you know, they were ranging to meet again and they were getting on really, really, really well. So well that Lizzie Cundy actually felt obligated to interview Meghan Markle on the red carpet the next night at this big global charity event. And she got a bit of stick from her producers because the producers said, no, we've got all these famous names coming. We don't have time for you to interview a little nobody that nobody even knows who she is. And Lizzie Cundy stuck to her guns being the good, sincere sort of person that she is And she did interview Megan and she got about maybe 30 seconds before the rest ended up on the cutting room floor. But that's the sort of person that Lizzie Cundy is. She's very loyal. She's a good person. She'd be a good mate, I reckon. So like I said, when when Megan met Harry, Lizzie Cundy was ghosted, was dumped, just like Piers Morgan was. And that was that. And then we've got Millie McIntosh, which is, she was a star in that reality show Made in Chelsea. And um, they were mates, you know, drinking rosé by the pool and having a good time. Whenever Megan was in the UK, she would give Millie a call. So she was having fun with Millie McIntosh, like I said, drinking rosé by the pool, all that sort of thing. And she had actually met Harry and she did tell Millie about meeting Harry, but it was upon the engagement that Millie McIntosh actually reached out by text and she got the big fob off, like really curt and really like, leave me alone, how dare you never contact me again. As Millie quite eloquently put it, she felt like she was telling her to F off. (laughs) And so she did. But the interesting thing I found about that quite small story about Millie McIntosh was that Millie McIntosh managed to give her all her best contacts, her best contacts for nails, her best contacts for hair. I mean, if you're a woman, you don't just give out your best contacts for things like that willy-nilly. You wait to see if you really like that person because let's face it, If it turns out you're not going to have a real genuine friendship with that person, you don't want to meet them in the hairdressers. I mean, I'm not going to hand out my hairdresser just like that in case I don't like the person and then I'm going to be sitting next to them. (laughs) No, I'm only joking. But a lot of people are really careful about, you know, their, their special contacts that they hand out. And evidently she didn't only give her like hair and makeup and nails and all that sort of thing. She gave her a lot of really good names and a lot of really good contacts. And so Megan is just so good at being a professional networker with her career on the rise. She just apparently isn't very good at being a friend. Let me know what you think about Lizzie Cundy and Millie McIntosh and Piers Morgan and the whole thing and how it unfolded. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye.